There's a lot of smart people that come up to me and they say, Pat, this business thing is a piece of cake. I have a job, I'm an executive, I have a degree from XYZ and I'm thinking about being a business owner and it's gonna be so easy for me and they go in extremely arrogant and cocky and then boom, they fail and they wonder why, okay? So in this video today, I'm gonna cover with you why smart people so often fail in business and I'll unpack it for you on 12 different points or so I think I have here to cover with you but I wanna tell you a story that really impressed me so much. Arnold Schwarzenegger is done being a governor Okay, he's done his Mr. Olympia seven times, you know, he's gone out there and become an actor in all these different movies and he's married to Kennedy and he becomes a governor, two terms California, liberal state, he's a Republican. He's done the impossible in multiple different areas of his life. Watch what happens. After he's done being a governor, after the scandal with his wife, which if you haven't read the book Total Recall, I highly recommend it. Let's put a picture here of Total Recall. They ask him, they say, what do you want to do? He says, I want to go back into Hollywood. Said, oh wow, are you like excited about playing A type roles and all this other stuff? He says, no. I have to make sure that I earn everyone's respect that I still know how to act. I have to start off as a beginner again. And I have to take any job they give me. Now think about this. Here's a man with a resume bigger than the Bible as far as a resume goes. He can put so many different things in there. And he says, I have to earn everyone's respect. I think that's one of the reasons why he's constantly one in his life, and I think that's one of the reasons why smart people have a very hard time with business. So step number one, first thing we're gonna talk about, I, I, I chose 12 different points, and I put one of them at number one because I, I don't believe anything is above this. I don't believe anything is above this for smart people. So if you're watching this and you know who you are, and you're smart, you think you're smart, you consider yourself smart, or maybe very smart, and you think you're smarter than everybody else you meet out there in the room, Rule number one will bite you in the butt. Let me tell you. Shoshin disappears. What's Shoshin? Shoshin is a mentality that's called the beginner's mindset. Once the beginner's mindset goes, I don't care how big you are, I don't care how wealthy you are, I don't care how powerful you are, I don't care how much influence you have, I don't care how many Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, how many followers you have. When the beginner's mind goes away and you're no longer learning and improving and figuring out ways to make yourself better, you are toast. Let me tell you why. Here's why. Just 10 years ago, internet's only been around for 20 years or so, not it's been around longer, but just 20 years that became publicized and we're all using it. Then came uh, AOL chat and then all of a sudden came net zero. Some of you guys will remember net zero. Then came you know, uh, MySpace, which was very big, you put your song, then came, you know, Friendster was before, then MySpace, then Facebook, then Instagram, then now, uh, 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 then Twitter, you know, ins Twitter came before, then Twitter, you know, then now Snapchat, now there's, there's all this stuff going on. Business is changing, and it's changing so rapidly, so rapidly that it requires you and I to learn rapidly. So if you're not a new CEO or new entrepreneur, new business owner, new executive every single day with that mentality of, man, I know nothing and I'm gonna keep learning, you're gonna be in trouble. If Socrates on his deathbed said, the only thing I know is nothing and he is one of the most famous you know, philosophers of all time, what makes you and I think we know all this stuff? We don't. So the mentality why smart people fail is because they already know enough. Second thing, too conservative. Sometimes a smart person comes in and they've already been taught a certain ways or their, their mind's already been built up in a certain way, they, they are way, way too conservative, way, way too safe. And in the world of business, sometimes it gets ugly. You know, sometimes it gets dirty. Sometimes there are some risks you gotta take. You just gotta take, and it's not conventional risk. It's not conventional thing that I'm supposed to be doing this. No, you can't, you know, there's sometimes that you gotta do some stuff that you can't read in any book or any videos on valuetainment. Literally, there are certain things in business that's like, what do I do in a situation like this? I'm working on a book right now, I'm flying over to uh, New York to talk to a handful of major publishers because they want me to publish this book that has to do with specifically on how to process issues. They, they, once we learn how to process issues, but still if you're too conservative, you're gonna be tossed in the world of business. There's gonna be times in business that you have to do certain things that no one's gonna think about. But smart people typically just go too to uh, by the rule is what they follow. Not laws, not laws, not regulations, rule. It's a different story. They're afraid of breaking rules sometimes, conservative people. Now next, overpromise under deliver is they're so smart, they, they, they know so much 
that they're coming across as, you know, we're going to be able to do this and I'm going to be able to do this. And they give so many different promises to everybody and they don't deliver. So many different promises and they don't deliver. And then eventually people say, I don't want to do business with this person. If you are going to make promises, you better deliver. I will never forget, we're about to start a company called PHP. This is October of 09. I'm having lunch with a man named Bill in San Bernardino Valley. And I am obsessed with capitalism. I'm a, I went to a meeting in Miramar Hotel, Santa Monica. I am obsessed with capitalism. I am so obsessed with capitalism, entrepreneurship, like to the point where I bleed capitalism. Everything in my blood is about entrepreneurship. Immigrant from Iran, 1.8 GPA, divorced family, not the smartest cat on the block. No one in school thought I was going to go anywhere. I didn't play sports. I'm just a guy that worked at Hagen Dazs and I worked at Burger King and Bob's Big Boy. There's nothing on my resume that says this guy's going to go places. So all of a sudden I fell in love with capitalism because it gave me an opportunity. As long as I can work hard and improve, I can compete with anybody. I'm in a diner in, in San Bernardino Valley, right off the 210 freeway to uh, uh, the north side of it. And I'm having this meeting that we're all the way in the back. I said, listen, this is what I want to propose. I think, I think an immigrant and a group of immigrants like myself, we can come together and we can bring the spirit of free enterprise and capitalism and entrepreneurship to America and the world. And this man, Bill, turns around and says the following thing to my face. He says, Patrick, don't you say it unless if you deliver. If you're going to say it, you better deliver because no one's going to believe you. So he said, think twice before making this massive of a crusade a launch to the public, because if you don't deliver, you become a hypocrite. You'll become somebody who constantly overpromises and under delivers, and you become another person that uses just their intelligence, not someone who comes through. I thought about it, I came back and we said, we're doing this. And he said, okay, so the pressure's now on you, and then we have to deliver, right? So you gotta make sure if you do this, you best deliver. Smart people sometimes, they're so logical that they have a hard time delivering with this because everything is so logical for them. Next, fact-driven. This is a perfect transition with this. So, look, there is a, there is a part with uh, raising kids, right? I got three kids, and my two boys, they're in the MMA phase right now. They're, they're the five and three-year-old. These kids want to fight all the time. Like, I don't need to go to pay-per-view and ask Dana White what next fight's going to be between Conor McGregor and you know, Nick Diaz. I just need to sit there and watch these two boys go at it. And literally, the other day, Paul and I, Paul, we're in LA. Okay, I'm in LA. Paul's the babysitter. For half a second, I made the mistake of making Paul the babysitter for a split second. Paul's in the back. And Paul is doing something with the camera, Tico and Dylan. They're sitting in their seat. I'm driving. All of a sudden, you hear my son screaming. Ah! The older son's screaming because the younger son is not bullying the older son. And I got to talk to the younger son now. And my older son is bleeding everywhere here, right? And so this kid hits him, scratches him, all this stuff. And now I have to sit there. And when you have kids, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to raise kids. And factually, you're supposed to love them. And you don't do this. And you just, so, so many facts, you know, logically, we're supposed. Marriage, raising kids, it's so amazingly emotional that if you don't get away, if you get away from the emotional heartbeat side of both of their feelings and the way you communicate with them, you're gonna lose them, right? And I have a daughter, and my daughter's gonna be completely different than my two uh, sons that I have. What's the point I'm making to you? Business has a heartbeat. And in business, if you only treat it logically, it's gonna die. It needs emotions. It needs to be fired up. It needs to be driven. You can't just take everything logically and go out there and drive everything logically. There's certain times that you can't just go out there and use facts. There's certain times that you gotta use examples of something that happened that's story-based. There's certain times you may be sitting in a room and you're looking at the numbers and all the numbers suck. You are getting killed. Like I've been in meetings where our company, we were getting hammered. I lost the number one producer, I had to fire him, I flew to Utah. And all this stuff that we had to do. I'm in front of the guy's wife. Our numbers are like this for six months straight. And in a factual meeting, I'm supposed to sit there and say what? Well, guys, we suck. We suck. We are going out of business. No, no, no. In that moment, in that moment, you need to know. Emotion. Heart. Why do we start this? Why are we doing this? What's the purpose of this? How did it all just get started? Why are we we doing this business here? Tell me. Show me some emotion. Where's your heart at? What are you thinking about? This is why we did this. 
Are we going to get tougher? How are we going to respond here? In that moment, I learned a lot about the heartbeat of our uh, uh, leaders. Let me tell you what happened. The smartest person in the room quit. The smartest person in the room quit. The person with the fanciest degrees in the room quit. The person with the fanciest resume in the room quit. Logical. Complete logical. And the other person are sitting there saying, you know what, you're right. And all the other guys that were in the room now own the company. Why? Logic versus emotion. It's just how things work out sometimes. Next, me mentality. This is a tough one because uh, the, 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 the challenging part about smart people is it's so much about me, I gotta build my resume. We get people that come and go, a lot of people that wanna work with me and just to say, hey, I work with Patrick Bay David on Value Team and they wanna add it to their resume. They come and go, they come and go, they come and go. Me, 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 I gotta build my resume, I gotta build my resume, I gotta build my resume, I gotta build my, everything's about build my resume, build my resume, build my resume. There comes a time where this entire thing called life, you realize it's really not about you and I. And let me explain what I mean by that. Like if you wanna build an empire that's very, very big, if it's only about you, eventually people will realize it and you don't inspire anybody. Because it's all about a me mentality. It's gotta be around the people around you. What are their dreams? One of my favorite conversations to have with any one of our employees, any one of our salespeople, anybody I do business with, it'll be a regular conversation at a lunch or coffee or something, this is what I'll ask. Um, what's your vision of life? What do you want to do? How do you see yourself? What type of a role do you want to see yourself being here on the team? Where are you at? Oh, oh, and people don't know. What do you, what do, what do you want to do? And, I, and I'll sit down, I'll ask this question. You, so many times I, I ask this question, people start shaking around me. I'm like, why are you nervous? Because I don't know. So how, well, let's find out. This thing called life goes like this. My dad's 74 years old. He was hospitalized for two and a half weeks. Like this. Then called life goes. Like, like this it goes. I just had my friend, I was in LA visiting. Her uncle died, another uncle died. All of a sudden, these are people I had dinner with, like this. So what's your purpose? And they'll tell me, I wanna have a role here, I wanna do this, and I wanna be part of this, I wanna one day, like I have two employees, both girls, both girls, look at this. Both of them tell me, one day I wanna be the CEO of the company. And there's, a, there's some other people that are, under, one day I wanna be the president, one day I wanna do this. Girls are telling me they want to be the CEO of the company. I'm like, awesome. Guess what I want? I want people that say things like that. And I want to make sure that they mean it because there's a difference between, you know, saying it and not meaning it. They say and they mean it. Well, if you want to be a CEO one day, you got to do that, 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 that. You got to read these books. You got to work like this. You got to get these. I want to do that one day. Great. King versus kingmaker. It can't be all about you. And smart people, it's about them because when you go to school, what does school teach you? You gotta build your resume sometimes and sometimes it's a beneficial thing to work for a big four because you build your resume. And you want, it's just so much about this crap that these educated university professors are teaching people and they're developing people like this that become me mentality. Maybe the system's designed to create people like that, right? It's about being a kingmaker. Business is all about being a kingmaker. How can you take somebody who's a nobody in the company yet and then develop them to be somebody that they have a responsibility amongst other people. That's the kingmaker. You're developing people after finding out exactly what they want. Next, entitlement. Entitlement is, uh, I worked with a lady in the past and I told myself I will never do this. Intentionally, I said, I will never do this. Never do this. And this lady, extremely talented, she thought she was smarter than everybody else. She thought she was smarter than everybody else. And so what happened one time is I saw a trend, and this is what the trend was. We all would come out with great ideas, and she would always take the credit for the ideas. And one time it became public, and other people came up and said, well, Pat, we came up with this idea. Why is she always taking credit for this idea? And I would 100% of the time, I always protected this lady. This is just my nature. 100% of the time, I always pr protected this lady. Because we're doing business together. But then she started taking it to a whole different level, a whole different level, a whole different level. Whole... You know what's the first thing I said to myself? That, by the way, she did a lot of things right. She did a lot of things. But this one thing, here's what it did. All it made me think about is, man, the idea is she took so much credit because it's all about her. I don't ever want to do this. Ever. So here at the office, we have very simple point system. We kid about them. We are, joke about a lot. Whoever that comes with the idea we're supposed to say who came with the idea. And we give credit 
to the person that gave birth to the idea. Why? Well, because it is what it is. The other day, uh, uh, Luis, he's a newer guy to our team, Colombian guy, play basketball, right? He's behind the camera, you'll see his face one of these days. He comes and says, hey, Patrick, you know, I think we need to get this camera. Look at this. You know, he's showing me, the, what, what did you call that camera thing? What's it called, Luis? Uh, Osmo. It's called Osmo? Yes, sir. It's Osmo, am I saying it right? And it balances right, right? And I said, Luis, what can we do? He says, hey, how about we get a virtual reality? He starts doing research and sending us all this stuff. Man, that's not my idea. I didn't know this. He's coming up with this idea how to make a stabilizer because we're doing a vlog and Paul and I going on. What if we get something like, cool, awesome. We want to create that environment because it can't be about you getting the credit. Now, here's a challenge with smart people. They love taking the credit. Man, but they hate taking the blame. Oof, it's a tough one, ain't it? It's like, man, yes, because I'm such a great leader in, in this. But hey, the, the, you guys suck in this area. That's not my fault. That's not the right. I've never done, I would never. Listen, if you want to make it in business, credit goes here, blame goes here. It's the only way you build kings. If credit goes here and blame goes here, you build kings. If credit goes here, blame goes here, you're the king. It's kingmaker. There's a lot of guys online that you know, are YouTube sensations and experts and all this other stuff. You know what I always want to ask? Here's what I always want to ask. Show me one or two people around you that have been successful, that work closely with you, and you don't hear any names. It's just their name. This is why our YouTube channel is not called Patrick by David. It's called Valuetainment because we're going to bring a lot of talent on Valuetainment. We're going to recruit a lot of talent on Valuetainment. Lots of them. You'll see. This is just the beginning. Wait till we get to a million subs. There's a vision with what we're going to do with Valuetainment. Lots of vision what we're going to do with Valuetainment, but it ain't about the brand. It's about the people that represent the brand. So smart people have a hard time with credit. They're title driven. I'm this position. I'm that position. I'm this position. You're too smart for business. Business is about what, what place can I elevate here, not what position can I build here for my resume. What position can I elevate here? What can I do here to get them going, right? Next. Won't admit mistakes. Won't admit mistakes. Hey, I did, I'm, 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 I'm sorry I did this. I'll fix it. Here's one thing I learned a long time ago. You know what's the fastest way to finish an argument if you're at fault? You know what's the fastest way? I'm, a, I'm sorry. I'm at fault. Let me tell you where I learned. My wife and I would get into heated arguments. Like, I'm talking heated arguments that belong in movies, right? Heated arguments that end up turning into three babies afterwards. But really, really heated arguments that we have, right? And so eventually I'm like, you know what? I'm tired. I just, just, there's no purpose for this. What the hell am I arguing for this here? If I'm at fault. So here's what I would say. Babe, babe, do you realize what happened? You're right. This was my fault. This is my fault. And so I started 100% right off the bat saying it's my fault. And there's not, remember, my ego. I'm a, I'm, I got an ego as well. Everyone's got an ego they got to deal with. Babe, it's my fault. Whoa. Then she would say, babe, it's my fault. Then it became a culture in our relationship. Babe, this one's my fault. Babe, come on, babe. I know, I just told you it's my fault. I'm sorry. I know, I'm just upset. Okay, cool. Like, cool. It's my fault. That's it. No one's killed. No one's getting arrested. It's all right. We make mistakes. I don't walk on water. I don't want to walk on water. I don't want to be known for being perfect and walking on water. And neither do you. It's a lonely place to be. You're always walking on eggshells, man, when you, when you have to act like to being so perfect. Next, lack of selling vision. Sometimes it's so logical that they don't sell vision. You gotta sell vision, where we're going. These two are kind of similar, but you always gotta know where are we going, where's this thing going next, where's the company going to next, next. Uh, they're trying to outsmart hard work. Now, there's a whole debate going on right now where everyone's posting questions, sending me snap. Hey, Pat, this guy on YouTube said everything's about hard work, but this guy on YouTube said, you know, it's about working smart. What do you think is a smarter thing? You know, I'm like, okay, what are you trying to say? Well, do I have to work hard or do I have to work smart? I can't say that I've met a single person that became successful that didn't have to work hard for a period of their lives. I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody that didn't work hard. Like, I honestly, I don't know one person that became successful not working hard. I don't know a single person that became successful not working hard. Now, let me explain this. If this guy works hard and this guy works hard, they both work very, very hard. But this guy learns how to work smart, it's a compounding effect. However, this guy works hard, but this guy works very smart, but he's extremely lazy. He can't compete with this guy. Because he can't even get to the level of this guy to be picked up. 
it, the minimum requirements, the entry is hard work. It's just what it is. It's just not gonna happen for you to get there. You know, right now the debate's going on in the NBA, well, who's supposed to be the, uh, what do you call it, the MVP, right? They're talking, who, who are the names? Harden, Westbrook, Kawhi Leonard, LeBron James, and I think that's really the four. I don't think there's anybody else in the, in, in the four names. Curry's number five, six, he's not, because he's been back to back, so they're not gonna give it to him. You know Curry's not gonna be MVP, that's a given, right? Okay, you know, what, you know what's the one percentage no one knows? Here's what's the craziest percentage. Kawhi Leonard shoots 89% free throw. Did you know that? Do you know how many people know that stat? Very few. You know what LeBron James is shooting this year? 68%. 68% is the lowest free throw he's shot in his career. Now look, the stats he's putting up is beast mode. He could win MVP and it's argu arguably solid. But you know, there's certain things that behind closed doors, free throws is hard work. You can't outsmart free throws. It's hard work in practice. Free throws, LeBron's body, LeBron's body requires a lot of diligence and diet and the way they eat. These guys all have a physical body, that, that's a lot of hard work. So you can't outsmart hard work, period. You gotta learn hard work. Smart people have a hard time with that because they think they have secrets that they can do voodoo stuff and get everybody else to do stuff and they get credit until eventually the numbers show up and people realize you just don't really work that hard and you've kept it a secret for 10 years, now everybody knows. You, your talent's kind of where you're at, but you're, if you would have added hard work, man, you'd be killing everybody, right? No high road. Let me explain what high road is. Man, so um, I learned this. I learned this, you know, sometime when you, when you build a business, your people will teach you a lot. Um, the people around you will teach you a lot because you're not the smartest person in the room. Collectively, we can all learn a ton. And one of the things I learned I've made the dumbest mistakes in business. I have a video called, you know, what, what's the video? The 12 dumbest mistakes uh, I made as an entrepreneur. No wonder it's one of the top five most popular videos I have on YouTube because people love finding out about the dumbest mistakes I've made. I can do 20 of those videos. But there was a part about this where um, I started attracting uh, people who were uh, extremely successful in the past. And these guys, uh, uh, you know, would bring their ego sometimes and all this other stuff. And then I brought a couple guys that were hard working and they were difficult to work with at times, right? And if there was 10 arguments to argue with them, seven of them produced nothing. So I gave them the victory. But these three that mattered, that could hurt them in the business and kill them, I'm not compromising here. But I had to learn where to take the high road. And smart people have a hard time taking the high road. You gotta pick and choose. Out of the 10, you don't need to win every argument. But there are two or three that you cannot compromise. The other seven is their ego. Let them win the ego part. Just give it to them, the ego part. Some of the comments, you know, let them get it. But you gotta know, sometimes there's things you cannot compromise. I've been in meetings. I've been in negotiations where the other person says some stuff. I have one very big negotiation about a year ago. A person said something that really, really annoyed me. I took the high road. We came out. We negotiated. We're gonna end up doing $10 million with that person this year. $10 million we're gonna do this year. It's not bad in a year to do $10 million uh, in one year with this one business, one, uh, one company. That just kinda happened accidentally, but I had to figure out a way, no high road. You have to uh, take a high road because I don't need to win every single argument. Just the ones that really matter, that part you don't need to compromise because this could put you out of business. Next, fear of adapting. Smart people are afraid of adapting. Let me explain to you why. Fear of change and fear of adapting. Do you know why so many of us are frightened of adapting and changing? Let me explain to you why. Because when we have to change, what that means is the existing us is not good enough. And smart people don't like to be known that they're not good enough. Let me say one more time. Smart people, they've been told they're smart all their, all their lives. So you're telling me all of a sudden I have to change and I'm not good enough? Yes, you're not good enough. You're not. You and I are not good enough to get to the next level we wanna to get to in life, whatever that level may be for you. This has to change and adapt for you to be able to go there. Because if you don't, the lower level you is pulling you down to this level. This is why you cannot go to this level. This needs to shift. Smart people have a hard time with that because they live off their resume. Here's who I am, here's what I've done. It's their resume. Smart people, okay? fear of adapting. If you are willing to adapt and you're willing to change, then you give yourself a fighting chance to make it in business. So anyways, these are just 12 of the points that we have here. Were you trying to say something? Yeah. 
Yeah. Did I miss one? Not getting hands dirty? Did I miss something here? Sure. Bottom left, bottom right left. Oh, okay, I missed this one right in the middle. Let me get through that one as well. So not getting your hands dirty. So smart people, one of the things they'll do is, um, what's the word to use? Righteous, too good. Okay, like uh, I remember we did some interviews for some, some guys that came through and they would say, oh, I would never start at the bottom. I, I, I went to college and I have a degree from such and such place. Uh, I need an executive position here uh, because I got a degree from such and such place. I said, oh my gosh, I am the wrong employer for you. You got to go somewhere else because we won't do that here. We good? Awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. Boom. Out the door. I have no time for that. I have zero time for that. I had a girl I hired one time. Oh my gosh, this person was a diva. Okay. She was not willing to do the dirty work, but she wanted to make the millions. Okay. Oh, but you don't understand who I am and what pedigree I come from and what university I went to and what I did. No problem. Great. Now watch this. I have another girl, Merle, who went to UCLA, who worked for me at 22, 23 years old. She had bags. I wish I would have taken pictures of you, Merle. She had bags here because at 6 o'clock when she's done with her job, she would stay till 10 o'clock doing her homework for school because she went to Woodbury University to get her MBA. The other day, somebody snapped me back because I was wishing Merle a happy birthday. And they said, is that Merle? I said, yes. They said, I went to Woodbury University with her. I remember her till today. I said, Merle, do you remember? Yeah, I remember this guy. That's kind of cool. Merle comes in, humble. She's got the degree from UCLA, Woodbury, MBA, 23, 24 years old. She's willing to work and gets her hand, get her hands dirty, no problem. Guess what? She owns a piece of the company and I have zero problem with that because she had no problem getting her hands dirty. Sometimes smart people, they don't want to get their hands dirty because they're too righteous, too good to get their hands dirty. Anyways, so today's episode, to all the smart people that are watching this, listen, adjust, adjust. You're not as good as you think you are. Believe me, kind of relax a little bit. You can do a lot more. This will make you a lot more money. You'll become more famous if you actually realize you're not as smart as you think you are. So if you got any questions, any comments, any thoughts, comment on the bottom, and if you haven't subscribed, to this channel yet, one-handed catch. Hey, we're gonna do a contest at a quarter million subs, right? I think we're at 230,000 subs as of today. At 250,000 subs, I will be announcing another contest to invite people from all over the world to spend one day, one day with me to go through your business, your strategy sessions together. We'll make that on a video and put it on YouTube, or some of you guys will be getting a chance to come and fly here one-on-one, but we gotta get to a quarter million subs, and then obviously we gotta get to a million subs by the end of the year, Paul, good catch. Uh, and by the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and just make sure you join the notification squad. Notification squad, you guys are crazy. You're on fire. I love how uh, quickly you guys watch the videos and comment on the bottom. So thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.